hi guys welcome welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl and kamakawa ida as usual we give thanks to god for blessing us with another beautiful amazing day so guys today's video uh we are visiting the bombers of kenya where the african traditional village uh villages are located at so as you have seen we are at the bombers of kenya there is the view of the place it is a it's such a beautiful beautiful uh environment such a beautiful place to be and as you can see there is also the uh warthogs uh eating and grazing there peacefully so we are going to be uh visiting some of the bombers the cultural traditional kenyan bombers and get to see how the the uh, kenyan tribes uh, used to you know do their traditional homes and they still do up to today so these are the maasai's uh, performing their traditional dance right there as you can see they're entertaining the guests so um after the entertainment, we went straight to the bombers. We're going to just go straight to the bombers. That's me having fun, enjoying the whole uh, scenario, the whole place, the, you know, the environment, the clean air. Because as you can see, there's uh, plenty of trees. So trust you me, the air was super clean with my girl twinning and having all the fun you know if you are bored at home or you don't even know where to go kindly come and visit the bombers of kenya this is the place you should come to or visit okay so uh we are heading straight to the bombers the bombers are also like the villages uh the traditional villages of the kenyan uh tribes we have 42 tribes in Kenya. Uh, there are those uh, beautiful uh, houses. As you can see, they are very, very, very beautiful. So we are on our way to visit the first bomber. As you can see, also saw a monkey right over there. I hope you seen them. Yeah, such a beautiful, beautiful scene. Yes, yeah, so we are going straight, 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 straight. I just wanted you to also get a picture of the whole place, the entire place, how it looks like. Wow, if you have nothing to do, kindly come and visit. So these are the uh, 23 uh, places or the tribes and the bombers around this place. So the first bomber we are going to be visiting is the Meiji Kenda traditional cultural bomber let's get inside and see how they used to build their bombers back then of which some of the tra uh, tribes carry out the the same cultures up to date yes actually most of them so this is the first hut as you can see uh this is where they used to store their dried vegetables yeah this is how it looked like the uh magicanda these also these are the hearts so i want you to uh i did a, a very exclusive video so i'll just be letting you uh get a look of every every single place that's the second wife's heart wow amazing amazing this is the second heart of the uh magicanda that means they were polygamous yes so that's the second heart we get to see the other ones they were not labeled all of them i think the labels are off but at least you get to see how they used to build or how they still use how they still uh sorry how they still build uh or their homes you know their villages how they look like yes yeah, so have fun make sure to have fun hope you're going to learn something out of all these out of all these two all these the first wife's hat and as you can see i think it's a bit bigger than the second wife's hat that's how it looked like inside i think that's the sleeping area over there then there's the car sitting and the car you know where the, the fireplace yes 
So they used to build their houses with grass. That's how uh, it looks like. I made sure to take you all around so that you won't miss any part of the Miji Kenda's uh, village cultural uh, buildings. This is the watchtower. I think this is where the men used to stay. So uh, the second one we are going to be visiting is the Taita Cultural Boma. Let's see how the Taita uh, used to build their traditional villages, their huts, their houses. And as you can see with the Taita, there is the ma uh, they, they roof to the grass and then they touched uh, the down part with the mud. This is the husband's house, hat, sorry. That's how it looked like. Comparing to the magic and as you can see, uh, they have raised their uh, house up, you know, no, no, comparing to the magic and which is a bit down. Okay, so this is uh, the married son's hat. They used to also build uh, the married son. A hat so that's how it looks like I was trying to be fast so maybe if it's not this is the first white hat if you see I'm a bit shaky shaky it's because I was trying to move fast because there's quite a lot of bombers to visit and uh, we need to capture all i really needed uh wanted to you guys to you know see them all these the second wise uh granary where they used to store their you know food for the second wife after harvesting where they used to uh put the you know um yields so this is the third wife's granary. As uh, you have seen, the magic and had two wives. There is three wives for the Taita. This is the second wife's heart. I don't know the second or the third. I don't know if they are confused with the labeling. I'm not sure about that. But that means that the Taitas could marry up to three wives. That's the first wife's uh, Granary. So, the third one we go and uh, we look at the Korea. Korea are also uh, banned too. That's how the village look like. That's their hearts. As you can see, they are well uh, sealed compared to the to the other tribe that we've just seen. Their houses are well sealed, very well sealed. With a uh, roof, they did the roofing with uh, grass, dried grass. So they also have a, a way through. This is one and the same village. But they have a way through, a way out, you know. I don't know, it's because they used to marry uh, a lot of wives. So maybe the first wife lives on the other side and the second. But they can always trespass, you know. Yeah. So the next we go and visit the Kisi Boma. Let's see how the Kisi, this is the granary. When you see such hats, uh, they are their granary where they used to store their food after harvesting. And I, I don't know if you've learned this, but the first wife's hat is always the biggest. Yeah, it's uh, the biggest of all other hats. They've also finally uh, sealed their houses using mud. As you can see, and a roof touch of grass, dried grass. So that's the granary, that's what starts when you enter the bomber. 
the boma is also like a village or where you know the whole household lives so the next we will we visit the Kalenjin. let's see how the Kalenjin used to build their houses and some still do some still keep the tradition as you can see with the Kalenjin, uh like the first house there it's not well sealed on the top and this is the son's hut the boy's hut where they used to stay the boy's hut this is the granary where they store their foods with some other tribes they they really build their granary so well so beautiful this is the first wife's hut it's quite a huge one it's quite big quite quite big i want you to compare with them maybe the second wife's hut it's not that big compared to this as you can see also the other house is not well sealed on the top it has an like a ventilation uh this is the grandma's hat but with the first wife's hat is completely sealed to the top so that's where grandma used to stay and as you can see it's a whole bomber but there's a trust there's a car way through to the other you know other places these other ones are not well uh, sealed. This is the second wife's hat. I hope you are seeing the difference. The first wife and the second wife are not staying in the same compound. That's the husband's hat. Also not well completely sealed. Okay. And this is their granary. That's their granary. At least it's uh, raised a bit. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. This other one is the married son's hut. They also don't stay with the moms. We, we visit the Kamba. That's the husband's hut for the Kamba uh, community. That's how it looked like. Uh -huh. The second one is the, sec the third wife's hut. Something amazing about this, <laughs> I found it amazing because the, the third wife's hut is very close to the husband's hat i think because she's you know the kashungwa the <laughs> the recent one <laughs> yeah so the next hat is um let's see the second wife's hat as you can see how they have even arranged themselves and the bigger hat which we are going next to i think it's the first wife's hat Exactly, this is the first wife's hat and it's the biggest. And as you can see, there's like a distance between the third, the second, and the first. The third is very much closer to the husband's hat. <laughs> you can guess it for yourselves. <laughs> this is the married son's hat. Next, we go to Kikuyu. Pardon me because I had to really rush because of time and also the weather was not that conducive. It was a bit rainy. This is the grandma's hat. And as you can see, the Kikuyus, that's their granary. The Kikuyus still maintain their culture. This is exactly how they build their houses, by the way. <laughs> Most of the, if you've gone to Kikuyu land, they use the mbaos, the wood, uh, the what? Mbao in it was the timber, you know, to build their houses. And this is how exactly it looks like. This is the second wife's hat. This is how it looks like. And most of the Kikuyu houses, it's just that maybe the roofing they have changed to Mabati, to the iron sheet, but most still build with the timber. So these are the granaries. This is the first wife's granary, the second wife's granary. So most of the Kenyan community uh, tribes are very polygamous. I hope you have noticed that. So this is the husband. A husband's hat it's quite a big one uh, compared to the other communities uh, com uh, compared to the other uh, tribes I find it so big the husband's hat having two wives I don't know why that big big hat anyway so this is the son's hat it's also quite an accommodative one it's a, it's a big one it's a huge one for the son alone 
so uh, we get to see the first wife's hat it was built very spacious <laughs> wow it's beautiful it's beautiful how kenyans try kenyans you know still uh keep the culture up to date it's so amazing amazing yeah so we are going to be seeing that this is the first wife's hat huh? yes and it's so big it also has a ball uh, we we call it a way through or a balcony that's how spacious it was so next we go to the meru they are bantu also compared to the kikuyu as you can see the meru's hat they're not well uh finished at the top they're not well sealed that's their granary so beautiful so raised and well uh you know covered and secured uh this is the first wife's hat quite a bit small compared to maybe the kikuyu it's quite a bit small but as you can see they used uh mud to touch their their houses with to seal the house that's the second wife's uh, granary and then we get to this uh to the sons oh to the girl's hat interesting quite interesting by the way the meru has a girl's hat but the 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 others are no boys hat you know this is the f I think this is the first wife's and second wife's hat, then the husband's wife hat, sorry, and then there's the girl's hat. This is the second wife hat. And the Meru don't have a boy's hat. As when you read the that thing that describes the Meru uh tribe, you'll get to know why they don't have a boy's hat. That's the husband's hat. <laughs> Welcome to Embu Community, Embu Culture. One of the most interesting culture. Can you imagine they used even that time they knew cement or is it? Can you see they have well sealed their houses? By the way, they have they actually used it is well cemented. Compared to the other ones, they are mud houses. There is timber house. But this look at how their gran granary looked like. It's like a capot. You know, it's like a pot. The houses used to have like a window, a small window on top. This is the second wife hat. They were also polygamous. Uh huh. This is the I think the first wife. No, this is the food store of the first wife. I think. Yeah, as you can see, they have um. Uh, polished their house they have even painted their house oh my god what does that mean look they've even partitioned partitioned their houses compared to the other ones which they they actually not most of them partitioned but with this they even sealed it with some i think cement and even uh painted it so that means ish embo embo uh <laughs> a bit digital huh <laughs> to say so. so this is the sun's heart as you can see <laughs> quite an interesting uh community over here this is the husband's heart imagine look at the other hats and look at the husband's heart how it looks <laughs> it's just made out of timber and that's it and it's not even well sealed we get to the trucana 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 community they are plain nylots this is how their hats or their houses look like. That's how they used to do their hats. Uh, we get to see them. The next one is Pokot. That's how they used to do. They are also Nylots. A sub-tribe of the Kalenjin community. Hope you take your time and read that through. So that's how the Pokots had looked like and i think for this because they're not partitioned maybe they used to leave the whole family there you can just take your time and read through uh, that leaflet so um we get to the ma community the maasai there uh, this is how the wow this is amazing but i didn't expect this so the maasai look at their houses Build with stone. Yes, stone and cemented very well and partitioned so well. 
me expected baby even it's uh yani i never expected they were these dig- digital you know this is the third wife's hat it was so big and then i think there's like a room inside there so they didn't just use the mud alone they also used some uh, cement to touch uh to 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 do the finishing of the houses and their houses are uh a round shape they have a round shape and this is where they used to put their cattles at the center at the center if you have noticed their cattle area where the their cattle and herds used to sleep it's at the center of the boma so we get to the traditional homesteads and uh, get to see some other homestead for the pastoralists this is the pastoralist community and we are going to start with the gabra the gabra community are cushitic speakers so they are i think cushites yeah so the gabra this is this is how they used to build their huts uh i don't know this skin i don't know it's skin or grass mm-hmm. this is how they used to build they build mix the grass if you can see we get to somali they are found in the northeastern region and they have also a ca- ca- window or what should i say a ca- space out there when you see their entrance they have like this is the first wife for the somali first wife's hat and they also have a can curtain yeah they have a ca- curtain uh on the entrance in the entrance sorry so this is the sakuya community the sakuya community the akushitic speakers too sakuya community that's how they used to build their houses mhm and some have curtains as you can see so it's not a see a see through curtains made out of ropes So that's how they used to make their beds. That's how it looked inside for the circuit. Uh this is the rendile. Rendile, they also cushites. The rendile. These are pastoralist communities. Wow, and these are the samburus. Samburu, they speak my language. So that's the hut for the samburu. That's how it looked like inside. I think they used to share, they used to stay as a family inside all of them because you can't see the, you know, the wild fast wild hut and all that. So that's how they used to do and I think there is the cow dung mixed with sand or something to just uh uh seal their houses with. So that's how it looked like. Remember pastoralists move from one place to another so they don't stay at one place. That's why they just used to make such kind of houses. Yes, and we got the boranas, the borana. They occupy the counties of uh Marsabit and Isiolo. That's how it looked like inside for the borana hut. that's how it looked inside so guys that has been it now we got to see the uh, different kind of things the cultural uh, jewelries and other things that they sell out here after touring the boma now after knowing the uh, cultures and the traditions you, you can now come and get yourself something that maybe you'll be remembering you know your tour and you also be remembering the culture and traditions of Kenya so hope you have enjoyed the safari the tour and if you get time you can also come by yourself and get to visit personally and it's actually not expensive it's 200 bob for the adults and i think 50 shillings for the children from 3 years and above so kindly make time come enjoy uh from monday to sunday they are always open so these are the kind of things they sell 
uh, you can just come and purchase one at least for memories and also you can be uh, using them we are proud to be Kenyans we are proud of our culture we are proud of our tribes and we are always um, we, we are always you know so proud to be Kenyans let me just repeat myself there yes so come experience uh, the Kenyan culture which is a very very beautiful peaceful uh, land with very beautiful peaceful people yes yeah, so just enjoy the rest of the video where you get to see the Agusi and the Luo traditional dances you know they get to perform the dancers get to perform quite a, uh, a lot of uh, songs so Karibuni for the dances stay tuned guys that has been our tour our safari at bombers of kenya we've seen all the traditions their hearts how they used to live and trust me some cultures practice the same same thing when you go to kikuyu you will find the same same thing so they always keep their tradition so that has been it hope you've learned something about the kenyan tradition we'll wrap it there until next time bye bye